Philip Markov was a well-bred medical student at Boston University with no criminal record when he was arrested by police, who had evidence that he was the Craigslist killer. In this interview, police present Markov with security camera footage, cell phone activity, and email accounts as evidence that he committed the armed robbery and kidnapping of two escorts in hotel rooms on April 10th, and the murder of a third on April 14th. Markov always claimed to be innocent, and on August 15th, 2010, one year and one day after the date his wedding was to have taken place, he committed suicide in his prison cell by cutting his major arteries with a primitive scalpel and swallowing toilet paper to be sure he would not be revived. In this interview which led to his arrest, Markov, who has just been pulled over on his way to Foxwoods Casino with his fiancée Megan McAllister, is initially friendly, denies all knowledge of the crimes, gradually becomes suspicious and hesitant, then clams up and asks to speak to a lawyer. He continued to claim innocence of the crimes. Next, you'll be listening to roughly 48 minutes of Philip Markov's police testimony in the original raw audio format. All right, for the record, today's date is April 20th, the year 2009. The time is 2.45 p.m. To speak at Detective Dennis Harris of the Homicide Unit and also present Detective Robert Kenny. The young man being interviewed here this afternoon is Mr. Philip. Would you pronounce and spell your last name, please? Markov, M-A-R-K-O-F. Okay, and with that also, uh, Philip, I'm going to produce a... Um, it's just you agreed to go on tape from the outset, um, so therefore there's no need to fill out that form. But now I'm going to produce a Boston Police Department Miranda warning sheet. Um, I advise you your rights. Right, would you spell your first name, please? P H I L I P. One L. Yep. And spell your last name. M A R K O F F. Double F. Yep. Markov. And what's your address, please? Do you want my local address? Yes. Eight High Point Circle. Eight High Point. Circle. Apartment 301. And where is that? Quincy. And today's date is 4.20.09 and the time is 2.46 p.m. All right, Philip, before we ask you any questions, you must understand your rights, okay? You have the right to remain silent. Do you understand that? You have to reach spot so it's yes, silent. I understand. Would you do me a favor? Would you place your initials in that space there? Hang on to the pen there for a second. Anything you say can and use, can't um, be used against you in a court of law or other proceedings. Do you understand that? Yeah. Do you put your initials there, please? Uh, you have the right to talk to a lawyer, a lawyer for advice before we ask you any questions and to have him or her with you during questions. Do you understand that? Yep. Place your initials there, please. If you cannot afford a lawyer and you want one, a lawyer will be provided for you by the Commonwealth without cost you. Do you understand that? Yep. If you decide to answer questions now without a lawyer present, you will still have the right to stop answering at any time to talk to a lawyer. Do you understand that, sir? Yep. You place your initials in that space. This next reads, let me see the pen for a second. I, there's a blank space, have read and understand the above rights as explained to you by me. I'm going to print my name, Detective Harris. And I'm willing to make a statement at this time without a lawyer being present. Would you like to speak to us now relative to some questions we have to ask you? Well, it depends what they're about. Maybe I should speak to a lawyer. Well, it's up to yourself, and it's a decision you have to make. Well, you what's know? this about? Well, it's about a, ser a series of incidents that have gone on, and we just have some questions. As you're well aware of, there's been some reports of some robberies and a homicide, and we've been following a ton of leads uh, as a result of that stuff. And you're a person of interest at this point, and we'd like to speak to you relative to that. Okay, maybe. Can you get me a lawyer? Now? Can I get you a lawyer? Yeah. You have a right to get you a lawyer yourself. And well, I don't. I don't know. I don't know where to get a lawyer from. Yeah, that's. I mean, is that your decision that you'd rather have a lawyer than to speak with me? I mean, yeah. I don't really know what this is about, but I probably should. I don't want to say something. It's up to yourself. Is that your request that you want a lawyer? Sure. I mean, can you get me one? Well, would you? Is just so we understand. I have a perfect understanding of what's going on. Would you? like to have an attorney here today and then continue some questioning, or would you like to not to speak at all and, and, and get an attorney? Because, I mean, you can make a phone call, you can try to have an attorney here, and you can go through the proceedings with the, an attorney present, if that's your wish. Uh, yes, I'd feel more comfortable with an attorney present, if all you right. could provide well, me with somebody. One of your next rights is you have a right to make a phone call. We'll let you make a phone call, and if you want to try to find an attorney and have an attorney respond to you. No, here, you can just have someone who does this. 
we have an attorney that does this? Or, or you know, who's... Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? I don't know what you're trying to say. You want to consult with an attorney before we move forward, is that correct? Sure. All right. Detective Kimmy, for the record, just so that it's clear, you're asking us to try to provide you an attorney. You don't have yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, have, I don't have a lawyer. I don't know where to get a okay. lawyer. And you absolutely don't want to talk to us unless you have an attorney before you talk to us. Because the, the thing of it is, is, I want to be very frank with you. you. I'm sure you have some idea of what we're looking at here, right? You have some idea what we're talking about? Not really. Well, you live in the area and you've been watching the news? I don't really watch the news. Do you read the newspapers? No. Not at all? No, people my age don't really watch because you don't watch the news, all right. Well, the, the detective talked about it briefly, that there's a number of incidents that have happened in the area. Your physical description, and that you're a white male with light-colored hair, has triggered our interest in you to some certain extent. But as you can imagine, there's about probably 80,000 other people that are about your height, about your facial features, about your hair color. Yeah. Um, you're a person of interest because of these things and some other things. Um, we would like to talk to you about that, but we're not going to talk to you if you insist on having an attorney. That well, what are the other things? Friends. Well, <laughs> until we get through this format, we can't talk to you about anything. Okay, well. But we have to, we have to, we have to make sure that you, your rights. I mean, we're going to be zealous in making sure that your rights are preserved. That, All right. That is our obligation to the law and our obligation to you. So uh, I would like, I would like. Can you provide me with an attorney? Then? We're not going to provide you an attorney. We'll make, uh, we'll allow you to make a phone call and you can inquire. Okay. It says you'll provide me one. Well, that's no. that's that's a process, sir. Is that says there, like if in fact you ended up in the court, if you were indigent, and if the courts found you indigent, then they would provide you with an attorney. That's in a different proceeding. This right now, you're like number one. You're not under arrest, correct? But you said I could have a lawyer for that. Well, the form is you have a right to an attorney. Okay. We don't actually give people attorneys. You can hire an attorney to move forward. Or at some point, if you were arrested... I don't think I can afford an attorney. Well, I mean, that's, you know, I mean, that's... That phone calls could be made to a company, uh, the, the public defender's office, and maybe they could make one available to you. However, you're not the deciding factor of whether or not you could afford an attorney. The courts are. But the bottom line, as far as this interview goes, Philip, so we're clear, is you have a, a right to have an attorney with you while you're being questioned, if you so choose, okay? Okay. Or you can shut down, you don't want to speak to us, you know, because you want to uh, take one of your, take advantage of one of your rights and, and get an attorney, and you can postpone this till another time. Um, the way that works, if we're going to provide you with an attorney, we being the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, that means that there's a process in place. If you were arrested, brought before a court, and you tell the court that, hey, look it, I can't afford an attorney and I want one, and it's at that point they'll either deem you indigent, where you absolutely, because of the information you provide them, cannot afford one, and they'll provide you with a public defender. However, if they find that you have the means, either with family or other areas, to afford an attorney, then they'll tell you to get an attorney before the next court date to hire an attorney. So, but right now we you can uh, you know we can see what's going on. If you want an attorney, that means we shut down. Okay. But I could stop at any time, right? You can, one. Well, so, that's another one of your rights. If you understand that, as we've read, you can proceed, you can talk to us. It's your right. You have to waive it, though. You have to tell me that, hey, look, I understand my rights fully, and I'm willing to talk to you, and I can stop at any time also. That's one of your so rights. So do you want me to fill this out? The rest yeah, of that, that, yeah, fill it out. And is that your understanding, that you're willing to talk to me? You want to waive that? Well, you said I can stop at any time. You can stop at any time. Well, I just want to hear what's going on from you. So okay. we can start. Let me... Okay, just so we're clear, though, we're going on the record. You you asked for an attorney, Detective Kenny, just in terms of... Well, I, from what you were saying, unexplained to me, I thought, like, you would provide me one. Oh, yeah, we just don't give people attorneys. Well, that's what I thought, like, okay. would, would happen, so... Okay, I mean, so the, the fact that you inquired about your interpretation of that right was that I had an attorney waiting outside and I'd let him, you speak to an attorney or something along those lines? Well, that's what, that's what I thought. That was my understanding. Okay, your thoughts now is that you understand... What I've explained. I understand if I want an attorney now, I have to get one myself. Right. Or, yes, or make a phone call and, 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 and you know, have one made available to you. We're not going to give you one. I wouldn't really know who to call the attorney. Okay, but, I mean, that's that's what phone calls and that's what there is advice out there for you to follow up on that. But before we move forward, Philip, you're clear of the fact that 
you, as you said, you're willing to speak and you know that right where you can shut down at any particular yeah, time? Yeah, I know, I know I can shut down at any time. Okay, so you're aware then. You're okay. aware of the way it works. That I, I just want to hear what's going on, so you okay, can Okay, but rather than for you to just to find out what this is all about, you're clear about your rights. I, I know my rights. You know your rights. Have you ever been advised you your rights in the past? No. No, this is the first time? I believe so, yeah. You've never been, had any interaction with the police before? I used to be on a youth court, so I used to read rights. Oh, you used to read rights? One, when I was like 15. Oh, yeah? Read rights to other people, or just... Yeah, read? it was a youth court. Oh, what does that mean? It's an alternative for family court for, you know, youth... Oh, youth court. I'm youth sorry, court. I, didn't, I didn't pick that up. I thought you said the youth court. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Youth court. So you did, you're, you're familiar with the rights then, right? Yeah, I think we okay. figured them out. Okay, very good. Um, as, a, as I alluded to early on about that... There's been a lot of stuff going on, and as a result of that stuff, there's been hundreds of tips coming in here. And if you haven't read the paper, you really don't have a clue to what we're talking about. No, I, I really don't read the paper or watch the news. So in the last week or two, you haven't heard anything about some stuff that's been going on in and around Boston regarding uh, Craigslist? No, I really, I really don't watch the news. Okay, well, just let me give you a brief synopsis of what we're doing then, okay? Okay. There's been a series of incidents, robberies of young girls in and around the uh, Boston area. Okay. And as a result of that, the Boston Police Department and other agencies have asked the public for some help. They actually printed some surveillance photographs of, of people that they thought might be uh, involved in this case. And as a result of that, asking the press for some help, it generated an awful lot of phone calls. People are saying, geez, I think the guy who lives next door to me might, might be a person of interest. Mm -hmm. Somebody else is calling, you know, I, I work in such and such a place. And, I, you know, this dude who, who comes in here every day, you know what it is. You know, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we are following up each and every lead that comes across the phones. I can tell you as I sit here, in my limited capacity, there's a photograph in one of the surveillance photographs, or a couple of the surveillance photographs, that's a strong likeness and image to yourself, Philip. Okay. One of the reasons why you are here. Um, so I was going to ask you, you live in Quincy. Do you frequent the Boston area at all? I go to school there in Boston. You go to school. What school do you go to? Uh, Boston University School of Medicine. Okay. And do you live in Quincy? Do you commute back and forth? Some days, yes. All right. Do you have, um, who are, who, do you have a, like a small circle of friends that you associate with? Uh, I don't really have too many friends since I live in Quincy. Okay. I moved there with my fiance. Okay. And how long have you been at um, uh, BU? Uh, two years. Okay. And what's your fiance's name? Philip? Megan. Megan. No, McAllister. McAllister. Is she a Boston girl? Or? No, she's from New Jersey. From New Jersey. Um, I can't believe you have you don't listen. And again, if you what, what do you do? What are you focusing on in school? What's your career? Your major? I'm a medical student, so medical student, we're doing so. hematology and oncology right now. Yeah, so your ball's deep in the books as well. Yeah. Um, okay. Have you um, no understanding, nothing about seeing any press, anything in the news, anything I don't really, sensational people, I, I think, at all? I think like young people like me, we don't often watch, like I don't watch local news, I'm not from yeah. Boston. Yeah, and how old are you? 23. 23. I guess I can relate to that. I have uh, kids myself that age, and as far as reading the papers, I don't know, so I guess I can uh, go along. Well, let me tell you that there have been some incidents that okay. you do match your description. Um, tell me this. Have you ever been to some of the hotels downtown Boston in the past week or so? Not in the past week. Okay. In the, before the past week, maybe two weeks, three weeks. You tell me. When was well, my last dad week? was, my dad and his wife were in Boston maybe in February and they stayed at a hotel. Okay. And what hotel was that? I don't remember. It's one of the ones near Prudential Center. Near yeah, Prudential Center. Is that the last time, Philip, that you were at a hotel? I believe. All right. Is there, could you have been there, like, recently and just don't recall it? Or? I could have, like, walked through the lobby. Okay. Do you have a memory of doing that recently? I don't have a memory of it off the top of my head. All right. Um, all right. If you think for a second, is there a possibility that maybe you did do something like that? Walk through the lobby? Yeah. Maybe. I don't remember. What would cause you, as a medical student from BU, to walk through a lobby? Well, the Prudential Center isn't it connected to all the hotels. So yeah. to go from, like, walk through the Prudential Center? Yeah. Don't you often walk through hotel lobbies? Um, yeah, what hotel is connected to the Prudential Center? And I don't frequently I don't really, I don't really know them that well. So, well, do you have, do you have, what, what brings you to the Prudential Center, if you don't mind? I've been there a handful of times. Yeah, is it just, like, coffee or shopping, or what brings you down there? All those reasons. Yeah, all of those. 
Um, but no one, ho- no one hotel jumps at, out at you as far as... Not really. Right. You do have a specific memory of being in one in that area when your mom and dad were in town. Yeah, they were in one. Okay. And where were your parents from? Syracuse, New York. Syracuse. Okay, and how long have you been in the in the Boston area? How long, what's, what year are you going to be? Uh, I'm finishing up my second year. Your second year. All right. And you've, have you lived at that Quincy address since then? Since I started, no, I lived in South Boston, and then I moved to Quincy. Yeah. Um, how does it feel to be wrapped up in this stuff? I mean, this is, is this your first time being involved at this? And I know you said you worked at the youth court. What do you think about, about being dragged in here on it? I don't know. I was trying to figure out what was going on. Okay. And, and, and as you know, I mean, if you have some familiarization with the courts, um, especially in something, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an investigation. You know the unit you're in now? Did you see the sign when you walked in the door? No. It says the homicide unit, and I introduced myself as a homicide detective. So that tells you okay. at least something, something that we're talking some serious stuff here, okay? Um, and following tips. And ever since going back to the OJ case, the sensationalism of the OJ case, which causes the public to respond in following leads, we're kind of like, you know, we're at, uh, you know, um, uh, a point where people call stuff in, and we follow up on it uh, regardless of what it is, because... In the courts, people will say, well, you know, 45 phone calls come in. You followed up one or two of them. Why didn't you do them all? And I can tell you is that there's a strong likeliness to one of the photographs in the surveillance photos, such as yourself. Um, So I was just maybe hoping that you had some explanation. Say, if I gave you a date of um, a couple of weeks ago, if you were to tell me there's a reason why you were there, and the person in the photograph was deemed to be you, then maybe you'd have a logical explanation for being in that area. But you don't seem to call to mind. Uh, well, I went out to eat at the Cheesecake Factory in the last, maybe a couple weeks ago. Which is right there. Do you yeah. remember Do you remember the day that might have been? Although I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't remember the day. And I, and I understand, because sometimes I don't even know that you know what day of the week it is, what date it is now. But as far as the you know going out to a restaurant, people might say, well, I like it there on Wednesday nights because they have a good special uh, do you happen to remember? No, what? I don't. I don't go out to eat much. And I went out with you. Megan and a couple of friends, and uh, we go you, shopping there sometimes. The Prudential Center. All right. When you say was that a couple of weeks ago? I don't remember when it was. You don't remember the day or anything like. I can imagine a BU. Might have been two weeks ago, three weeks ago. A BU medical remember. student, if you just you know maybe a Monday night is a night that you hit the books hard. A Tuesday night, maybe you do the books in the gym. Maybe a Wednesday you're a little bit more available to to uh, you know to get something. It doesn't ring a bell. You know? I don't remember when I was. It was yeah. probably a few weeks ago. Right. But you remember Megan and a couple of friends at the Cheesecake Factory? Yeah. Do you remember the, who the friends are that were with you? Yeah. And who were that? Uh, Peter Keenan. And Peter girl- Keenan? Yeah. And who else? His girlfriend, Yamin. Yamin? Shui. They're students in my class. Could you spell her? Oh, she's a student, a medical student? Yeah. Well. Yamin. What's her last name? Shui. Shui. All right. What? Any idea? I see a little smile. I don't know you're laughing at me because I wouldn't even take a shot at it. But, um, so no specific memory, huh? I don't really remember. Um, there's a couple of different locations in the last few weeks, a couple of different hotels, where this image and likeliness, tall, white guy, good-looking kid, same color hair, same frame, same structure um, as yourself. Uh, in some of these photographs, and uh, you know, just as far as justifying why you're there, uh, um, we're looking for some help so we can, you know, move forward. But you can't bring to mind any specific. Like, are you familiar with they say the Westin Hotel? Do Which you know one, the Westin? Yeah, the Westin. W. I think I've heard of that. I think my brother stayed there. Okay. Do you know when he may have stayed there? Oh, it was it was a while ago, maybe a, a year ago or so. Was there any reason? Or anything at all to cause you to have been there in the last couple of weeks? I mean, maybe if I was walking through it. Yeah. Well, well can you call something to mind, Philip? What would have brought you in there to walk through it? I mean, I'm, no, not, I'm not sure. I'm you can place remember. the Western. Can you picture the Western now? Can you picture where it is? You know, strategically. It's, it's when, like, it's next to the Prudential Center, isn't it? Yes. Well, if you're looking at the Prudential Center and the cheesecake, say if you walked up Huntington Ave on the outside, the left, the cheesecake is on the left hand side, and then moving forward straight inbound. The west end would be up on your right hand side. Can you picture it? I guess. It sounds familiar. Yeah. I think it connects to the Prudential Center. 
Yeah, well, there's because, like, I, I, because I think when my brother was staying there, I walked back and forth. I think it's a connection. Over the footbridge? I guess. Yeah. I, don't, I don't really yeah. remember. Yeah, but you have no clear memory of being there in the last couple of weeks. I don't, I don't remember. No. no clear memory. All right. Now, sure. there's another hotel down, moving closer to the Cheesecake Factory. The Marriott. Okay. Can you picture that at all? Yeah, I've eaten at the bar there. Oh, the bar? Which name of that place? Uh, it's a sports bar. I watched uh, a Red Sox playoff game with Yama and Peter. A playoff game. So last year, was that the last time you were there? At the bar? Yeah. I think so. I'm not sure. Okay. I mean, could you have been there in the last week or two? It's possible. I don't remember. I don't You're think I, I, I wasn't. I wasn't a champions. Okay. I think it was champions. It's champions. Name of the name of the sports up. Yeah. I mean, you were pretty. I went there. Kid. I went there with it a couple of the times. You were a pretty shocked kid, unless it's true the way it is on TV with medical students and stuff. You just flat out. I mean, it's only been a week or two. You don't have a memory of being there in the last week or so? And no, I haven't really done anything last week. Okay, so moving away from today, the 19th, 18th, 17th, 16th, 15th, 14th? Uh, that doesn't really help me. It doesn't help you? No, I'm not. You're just trying to jog your memory at all. Uh, tell me this, were you at a bar yesterday at a hotel? The 19th? At a hotel? Yeah. No. All right. You were at a bar, but not a hotel. Yesterday? Yeah. I don't think I did anything yesterday. Okay. Megan came home. So. I, and again, I'm just trying to help you. I was with Megan last And night. just looking for an understanding as to the way these tips are coming in. And if people think that it's you or it could be you because of your likeness to these photographs. Okay. Just trying to help jog your memory, so to speak. Yesterday is up. You didn't do anything yesterday. yesterday no, I was with 19th, Megan. 18th. Uh, well, I went out with Megan. All right. Do you remember where you may have gone? Yeah, we went to... It was off 24. 324. Off Next to the Olive Garden. Off Route 24. In Braintree? No, no. In Stoughton. Stoughton. The Olive Garden. In there was a... It's a weird chain. Uh, it's a chain next to the Olive Garden. Not know. Bugaboo Creek. It was one of those... I don't bar, it's a barbecue place. It's a, it was a chain. Okay, I don't get Olive out too Garden much. was busy. Right, I don't get out too much either, obviously. All right, move away from the 18th. Go the day before that, the 17th. I don't really remember what I was doing. 16th? Any I don't remember hotels, bars? Where? Like anywhere, it. anywhere. I mean, I'm just I trying to help you remember. I don't really. Does it help? No, I don't think I... Is that... 15th, 14th? I don't A couple of weeks, nothing? A lot of dates. No, and, and again, I can understand. And for the most part, we have such hectic lifestyles. And I can only imagine what yours is like as a medical student with um, remembering from one day to the next. But, I mean, some of you doesn't frequent hotels... Um, only when parents or, or families in and around uh, town, I would think that maybe you'd remember that. You'd have a, a reason to remember it. You know, because I tell you something, the photographs are pretty, pretty uh, clear um, as to why people would call, suggesting you know to take a look at you. Um, but you don't have any memory of being there in any of these places in the last couple of weeks. Is that true, or, or are you saying it could be possible? I don't really remember, to be honest. I mean, I might have been there when I was at the Cheesecake Factory or something. I don't remember. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't have gone over there and got a room afterwards, right? You're a college student, and it sounds like your money is lacking, so you wouldn't have gone over to get a room with Megan, correct? When? What night? Any night in the last couple of weeks. Well, we're going, to, we're going to get a room at Foxwoods tonight. Oh, you were going to Foxwoods Yeah, I booked tonight? a room tonight, yeah. Okay, you booked a room down there? Yeah. At what hotel, do you know? Do you remember? Foxwoods Hotel. Okay. MGM. That's, that's the neighborhood? It's the MGM Grand. Do you gamble? Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. So I get discounts on hotel rooms. Oh, not bad. Not bad. I've been down there once. That's when it first opened up, and that was many years ago. I, that's why it didn't ring a bell when you said Foxwoods Hotel. But um, other than that, when was the last time you had a room that you booked a room? That I booked a room? Yeah. I remember mean, it was probably would have been at Foxwoods. Would have been at Foxwoods recently? Could be. Yeah. When? I don't remember. I go to Foxwoods a lot. Do you go down there a lot? Do you gamble a lot? I don't know. I don't know what a lot is. Yeah. I go down there once in a while. I wouldn't say a lot. Once a week? Once a... Maybe a couple of days? Once a month? It varies. Yeah. And do you oftentimes stay there or you get... What do they I call stay it? there sometimes. Yeah. yeah. What do they call it? The, the rooms there? Um, comp rooms or something? Well, I don't... I really don't get comp rooms. I'll get like a discount room. Okay. So a lot of times if I go down there, I'll like inquire about a room to see if they have any left. What uh, what goes through your mind as, as I'm asking all these questions? I know you're a pretty bright kid. 
What goes through your mind? I know you try to, you said that you, you know, you understand what's happening and you're trying to figure out what's going on. What's going through your mind? Do you have an understanding of what this is all about? Yeah, I understand what you're telling. Do you understand? Yeah, I, I okay. think I can understand. And how we're following saying. up on stuff. And, and you know, in this homicide business and in these serious investigations, robbery, um, 99% of the time, investigators, we spend trying to prove who did not commit the crime as opposed to who did do the crime. You follow me? Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's where we spend an awful lot of our work. We have to cross our T's and dot our I's. And, um, and especially in a case like this where you reach out to the public and ask for help, it makes things a lot uh, more tedious for us. And as you sit there, and somebody who's a person of interest because of the images and the likenesses on the, uh, on the uh, surveillance footage, it kind of makes our job that much more difficult, you know. And uh, we appreciate your cooperation. Uh, but it's serious business. It's serious business. And I can tell you this, and as I've said homicide a couple of times, clearly you must think that it involves a murder. I've also mentioned the word robbery, and it involves a robbery. And sometimes, Philip, um, when things happen, um, it's a pretty ugly situation. We don't mean them to happen. Um, you know, they may happen accidentally. But as kids, when we do something stupid or we start to, to get on a road, we shouldn't. We get some advice that, you know, the time, if, if some shit happens and it's ugly, it's, it, it, it only makes things worse if you lie about it. Um, so if you're afforded an opportunity to just be truthful and explain attempt to explain your side of the story, so to speak. It just makes things a lot easier, uh, you know, moving forward. In, 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 especially when you have complicated situations. When there's lies attached to it, it just kind of makes things uh, really, uh, you know, that much more complicated. Uh, and, and, it, and it's difficult, it's difficult to, to, to rationalize, you know, why things happened, you know? Um, and again, that's why it's kind of like for me to try and ask you to remember if you're in a hotel. Myself now in a limited capacity and, you know, so much money. If I was at a hotel, that would be something that, yeah, sure, I remember that. I was down at the, uh, the Marriott just three nights ago. I was with, the, you know, a hot-looking girl. We had a couple of drinks and I was trying to get a room or something. I mean, those are memories that we'd always have. Um, but to you, I mean, if you're going to Foxwoods all the time, maybe that's the explanation for why you can't call it to mind. Uh, uh, for not being there, but then again, if you're willing to work with me and try to try to uh, you know figure out if you were there, that might explain why we're sitting here today. But if you sit there and you just have no absolute positively no memory of being there, um, it just it just doesn't help things, you know. Well, I said I have no specific memory. I might have walked through there. Yeah, but that's what I mean. If I mean, like I've walked through there often. I don't I don't know specifically though. So is there a possibility that you walked through there in the last couple of weeks? Yeah, I said that. Okay. But, but, and, and I know you said that. I know you said that. But there should be a little bit more to it, though. What would cause you to walk through, say, the, the, the lobby of the Marriott? Just to see what's happening there? To see what's going on in the bar? Or, Didn't they already know? answer that? No, not really. Not really. Just a casual stroll through there? Aren't they all, don't you have to walk through like no, all the hotel lobbies no. to get to places? No, not Don't necessarily. they all cut through? That's what my understanding of the country is. No, not necessarily. I mean, the mall, and, and again, I don't well, know. I'm, have... I'm not really sure then. I don't know the mall well. Okay. All right. I mean, no specific intention or direction or, or, or destination when you're in any of those places? Just a casual stroll through the lobbies? Might explain why you were captured on a surveillance? It could, I guess. Uh, I don't really know. Well, tell me this. Do you do you um, have anything to do with Craigslist at all? Do you kind of like advertise or no. buy clothes or buy cars or do anything like that on Craigslist? Well, I've looked at like for apartments and stuff. Do you? Just recently? I guess like I probably would glance at them. I've used Craigslist before to search for my old apartment. To do what? To search for my old apartment. The one you're in now or the one prior to that? Or I don't know if I got it off Craigslist or some other list, but when I was searching, I used it. Do you, while I'm thinking about this, uh, what is your date of birth? I don't know that I asked you that at the outset, did I? February 12th, 1986. February 12th, 1986. And that's your address in Quincy. And what is your uh, home phone number, please? In Quincy? Yes. 617-481-9198. Yeah. And that's the hotline, or is that a cell phone? That's my home phone. And do you have a cell phone? I do. And what is your cell phone number? 315 
Five six nine, seven seven five three. Now, do you have a, an email address? Yeah. And what is that? Phil dot Markov at gmail dot com. What is it? I'm sorry. Phil P H I L yeah. dot Markov at gmail dot com. And on my school email is forwarded to that one too. All right. And what's is it? What's your school email? Uh, P Markov at bu dot edu. Okay. And that's the only email address that you have. No, I have another one I used for playing internet poker. Do what? For playing internet poker and fantasy poker. baseball. All right, what's that one? Do you know? That is, let me try to think. I haven't used it in a while. I played fantasy baseball last year. It's like something stupid. It's my teams on steroids. My teams on steroids. At yahoo.com. All right. Any other emails or anything? I've had like a lot over the years. Yeah. Like, they, they come and go. I had one for, I used to play Pinochle online. Yeah. It's called Damn, I'm good at Pinochle at yahoo.com. Damn, I'm good at Pinochle? Yeah, I had one email address that my dad took over because that was his first email address. So what one of his. That? I don't remember. Was that Hotmail? I had it years ago and he was using it and he just kept it. Did you ever have one at live? Yeah, I'm just going to mark off. At live.com? I had a Hotmail one. A hot, what was that one? I just said it was my dad uses it now, I think. Okay. Okay. Is that the same thing as live? Hotmail? Is it? I don't know. Yeah, I, don't know. I don't know. I'm not uh, that familiar with that stuff myself. Do you think it is? I'm not Hotmail sure. Hotmail are two different servers, aren't they? Are two different well, Windows, Windows owns Hotmail. It's Microsoft Windows Hotmail. Okay. All right. Gambling. You like to gamble, it sounds like. Pinochle, poker, internet. Well, Pinochle's not gambling. It's not? I've never gambled. I didn't know you could gamble with peanut butter. That's news to me. I guess you can gamble with anything if you want to. You know? So, I don't know. Um, let's talk about Craigslist. When was the last time you were on Craigslist? I do not remember. You do not remember. I mean, again, can we do that? Was I on it two weeks ago, a month ago? I don't remember. Could you have been? I mean, that's the next question. I guess, yeah. You know, a lot of times, Philip, and you get a beer with me, and it might sound stupid, but, you know, a lot of times we know the answers to the questions, but it's just, it's affording you an opportunity to, you know, be completely forthright with me and just in the interest of helping to get this done. Okay. Helping to clear your name or to, you know, as I said, we spend an awful lot of time trying to prove we did not commit the crime, you know? So if you can work with me a little bit. I'm trying to. I know you. So let me ask you that once. When do you think was the last time you may have? I don't know. All right. You have no idea. I don't know. Right. Does that indicate that it's been that long? That you just don't have a memory of it? or? I'm not sure what that indicates. I don't. Okay. So if I was asked you, were you on it this morning? That would be a no. I was not on it this morning. All right. What about yesterday? I don't know. Right. I, don't know. I don't remember. So, as far as that goes, now, have you had any problems that, you know, uh, with some females lately in any of the, in any situation? No. Part of this investigation involves some women who have been assaulted, and that's what caused the police to respond. And that's what caused us to, you know, post some photographs looking for help, because it all started in some rooms. Now, being familiar with the courts, how old were you when you worked in the courts? It wasn't really the courts, it was a local thing. Okay. But I mean, you have some understanding, and clearly you're a bright kid. In order to have the police involved, nine out of ten times you have a victim that makes a phone call. And then the investigation starts, and then witnesses give some direction. And that causes the police to do stuff. And in some instances, such as this, is ask for help and post some photographs looking for some identification. Is there anything along those lines where, and I know you don't have a specific memory, is there anything where you may have encountered a female in a hotel room and things may have gone awry? No. She would have been pissed off at you to call the police? And again, keep in mind, just something, some food for thought, Philip, is sometimes... Um, Girls call the police if they feel they've been slighted and, and you know, they may make stuff up um, to complain about something. And that's when I go back to what I said sometime a little earlier, is there's always two sides to a story. 
And when you're afforded an opportunity to, to provide your version, that might explain things. But until we have all the pieces of the puzzle, we're kind of left with, you know, me trying to, as if I'm a dentist, trying to pull teeth or, or uh, and getting some information from you and attempting to jog your memory. Do you have any specific memory of having a hassle with a girl? No. You may have, you may have left, uh, and she was pissed off to the point where she may have wanted to call the police? No. Do you recall anything like that? I just answered that four times. Okay, four times. You're right. You're right. And again, just be patient with me. It's, it's not easy when, you know, when, when the way we're dealing with this, okay? Are you patient? So no specific memory, no hassles with any girls whatsoever. Not in the Western Hotel, the Marriott Hotel, no problems. No problems. What does that mean? I already answered this. Okay, and again, I just because Four the tape times. doesn't pick it up, that's why I asked it once again. Um, the car that you drive, is that listed to you? No, it's listed to my father. Your father's car. Do you have a second vehicle as well? No. No? Um, is there anything that you can tell us that might help us in, in what I'm asking you about? I don't think so. All right. and, and again, I'm, we're kind of at a loss here because you have absolutely no clue, according to you, about uh, what's been going on in and around the city of Boston regarding women who've been assaulted. Correct? No clue. Yeah, I haven't been. No clue. Never seen anything in the paper? No, that's that's true. That's true. Never seen anything in the paper, never seen anything on the news in the last couple of no, days. No, I really don't watch them. The your news, girlfriend the would not have brought it to your attention. Jeez, look at this. I just saw, you know. The, no, the, I don't really watch the local news. So no conversations with anything with anybody in your circle of travel no. that may have mentioned as to what's going on here, right? Um, what about outside the city of Boston? Any any hotels other than Foxwoods that you may have visited lately? No, other than Foxwoods. No, other than Foxwoods. Have you been in Rhode Island at all lately? Well, I go through Rhode Island. Because of Foxwoods. Okay, do you stop? Have you stopped going through Rhode Island at a hotel at all? Maybe to get gas. Okay, at a hotel? At a hotel? Yeah. You wouldn't get gas at a hotel. Well, that's what I asked. Have you stopped? I don't think so. On the way through? You don't think so? You don't think you're at a hotel in Rhode Island? I don't think so. Okay, you seem to be getting a little frustrated. Yeah, but you keep on asking me the same question. Well, I moved on from the Weston, and I moved on from the Marriott, and now I'm in the state of Rhode Island. You say that you go to Foxwoods all the time, and I'm just asking if maybe you stopped into a hotel in Rhode Island. Maybe, I don't know. Okay. Um, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think I'm going with all this? I don't know. What are your thoughts? Talk to me for a minute. Instead of answering all the questions, tell me what your thoughts are. Tell me what you feel right now, because you seem to be getting a little frustrated with me. And I can understand. I can understand where you're coming from. But, fellow, let me say this to you, okay? If, in fact, you are the guy in the photographs, that's one thing. Because you could just be simply that guy passing through the hotel, passing through the lobby, somebody that's out with your girlfriend at the Cheesecake Factory, walking through, going to a parking lot to get in your car to go home could be that simple. Or it also could be the guy who just left a hotel room where something went awry, and you're leaving there, and you are a suspect who has a story to be told. Whatever happened in the hotel room, that speaks to a certain set of facts. If you happen to be the guy that's leaving that hotel room and is picked up on surveillance cameras, you may have another piece of that story. And you could just throw that on the table right now. And that may explain things. Or you could be, as we said, just simply that guy passing through. But is it more than a coincidence if you're that guy who just happened to pass through the Westin, Westin Hotel? And again, maybe that same guy who passes through the Marriott the same guy who maybe passes through a hotel in, in, in Warwick? It could be. It could be because it seems that maybe these are things you do. But it could also be more than that. And it could be something that, you know, who knows what happens. Maybe some girls are pissed at you. Maybe whatever's going on, whatever your thing is, maybe, you know, who knows? Who knows? Unless you throw it out there, if that's you, the guy that's actually been in some of those rooms with some of these females, 
Maybe they, uh, you know, are trying to set you up or something. Who knows, unless you tell us. I clearly don't know, because I wasn't there. But if you say you're simply the guy that may have passed through, you don't even have a clear memory to be able to tell me that. You know? You do seem to frequent Foxwoods, because you seem to go down there a lot, according to yourself, right? Is there any other reason other than just maybe I passed through? Do you have a thing, do you hook up with girls? that you meet and you just don't want Megan to know about it, which is perfectly understandable. Over the years, a lot of times, guys sitting there, they want to tell a story, but they don't want to jeopardize relationships. They don't want to ruin an engagement. They don't want to end up in divorce court uh, because they have these things for, uh, you know, they have a girlfriend on the side or something. So that may prevent them from being completely honest. And something like that, that's, that's like a barrier in this business. If it's that simple, and that's what throws me off, you know, then trust me, the thing to do is just to be honest and throw it out there and explain why this is going on. Explain why you're sitting here in the homicide unit, uh, you know, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. There's an expla explanation for everything, you know. Things happen for a reason, Philip. We can't have back what happened, but we can make it right. And how do we make it right? Just by being honest. Just by being honest. When we start dancing around the truth, that's why things get all kind of discombobulated. And you kind of look at me, you get frustrated. Hey, I answered that already. And that's what happens when you're dancing around the truth. I think you know. I think you know that you may have been in some of these places. I think you know that. But you're just not clear as to how you want to tell me. You know? And the best thing to do when the shit hits the fan, as I said earlier also, is just to man up. Look, at this is, hap this is what happened, but this is why it happened. That's not who I am. I didn't do those things. This is what actually happened. This is my story. I'm not a stupid little shit. I know what happened, and I know why it happened. And I can make it right by just being honest. That honesty is the key to, you know, just move forward, and it opens up all those different doors when you're honest with yourself. And it actually, the honesty is what explains our behavior. Without honesty, one-sided stories can be pretty ugly. can be real ugly. Because all we have is the evidence at the scene. And that scene can be ugly and can speak to, it can speak to ugliness without this answer over here. You follow me? Again, you just nod, and uh, the tape doesn't pick that up. I'm sorry. Sure, I'm following you. You're following me. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, yes, let's well load. If we have, if we have an incident in the in the Western Hotel, and some girl is there and she's irate and she's pissed because of this and because of that, that's her version. And the same if you move on to the next girl and to the next girl. But there was somebody else that was there, some person that left, some person that's walking through the lobby afterwards who has a story to be told. And Philip, if you are that person, I can tell you now's the time to just to be completely forthright and give you a version. Because left untold, it doesn't look good. You know? If, we, if that evidence has to speak for itself, that speaks to, 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 to ugliness. You know? It's not easy. And things happen, stuff happens, but we can make it right. And fall back to when we, you know, brought up little lies turn into to, to big lies, and big lies turns into, you know, big bags of, 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 of shit, so to speak, you know. But if we step up, speak from the heart, hey, okay, listen, nobody ever meant for things to go the way they went, but this is what happened. Maybe, maybe, maybe it was an accident. Maybe it was. Maybe you were provoked, or maybe, you know, things, things got ugly and, and you were a victim here at some point. You know? But who knows unless you speak up, Philip? Who knows? Who will ever know? Right now we're left with one side of the table, one set of facts. I'm just uh, asking you, Philip, if you, you know, can find it in yourself to, to man up and step up. If that's you, that's beyond that casual stroll through the hotel to speak to it, to speak to what might have happened, what might have went wrong. Because it's happening. 
it's happening. And I think uh, you deserve it to yourself just to step up and, and lay it on the table. You know? It is what it is. There's no making it right. But we can end it with the truth. You know? And explain, put a justification to why it happened. And I'm going to ask you, Philip, the first incident that I spoke to in the Western Hotel, a girl was robbed. Did you have anything to do with that? No. Philip? Well, I just answered you. There was a girl in a hotel room that was tied up and robbed in the Western. That's her story. Were you in that room that night? I didn't tie up and rob anyone. You didn't tie up or rob anybody. Could you have been in that room and maybe somebody else did? No. No? Is there any... Do you have an understanding of what it is I'm talking about to you when I'm asking you just to, to, to step up and, and, and... I'm listening to what you're saying. It doesn't really apply to me. No? Okay. And, and you're just, like, telling the, me a story. I don't... Oh, I'm telling you a story. I don't have anything to add to it. Okay, well, I'm telling you a story as if that right now, in this story, your role in this story is you're the casual stroller. Maybe. Well, I don't, I'm not in the story. I don't know. Well you, well, you are in the sense that you're sitting here as the story unfolded prior to your arriving here. Your role in the story is that of maybe somebody who passed through the hotel lobby. That's your role, correct? That's maybe. I, I don't know how to answer that. Yeah, and it is. And again, it's only a scenario that I'm applying to this story as it's unfolding here. And I'm asking that if you're the guy that was more, of the, more than the casual stroller, that may have been up in the room somehow, some way, some shape or form, could entice into a room and something got ugly. Maybe you have an, an explanation as to what might have happened up there. I don't really know what you're talking about. Okay. I could, I mean, this is why I wish I had a lawyer here. I could, I could just be like nodding along and agreeing to something that you're saying. And, and that's fine. That I don't really mean that that and, didn't happen. And again, Philip, you're alluding to a lawyer, and we need to, uh, you know, expound upon that. You, if you want a lawyer, we are stopping this interview right now because that's one of your rights, okay? That's a right that you have. If you are that unsure of proceeding without well, an Well, the way you're the way you're phrasing things, it seems like I could just be nodding or saying yes, and the way you're questioning me, I could be agreeing to anything by well, saying yes or no. I don't really. Well, you that's really, why I wish someone was here to like tell me that I'm by nodding my head or something, I'm agreeing to something you're saying. No, and that's fine. And you know, the bottom that's line, why I wish I had one. Bottom, I don't really know who to call for a lawyer. Well, that's fine. You know what? We're going to stop this interview because you want an attorney. That's your choice if you want an attorney, correct? Uh, yes, if you're just going to keep asking me the same questions over and over. Okay, and again, it's just so you're clear, as far as you're nodding and agreeing to anything, you know what's going on. You're not agreeing or nodding to anything that you don't want to. You've understood the question so far. You've alluded to having an, an attorney present, so we're going to give you that, okay? Can you get me one? Or well, well, this is going to keep going on like this. Pardon me? If this is going to keep going on like this, can no, you get me one? No, but it's your choice. You, you can, we can make some calls right now. If you would like an attorney to come and, and counsel with you this afternoon and then continue this, that's all right. We can do that. We can do that, okay? One second, please. Okay, and that's what you want to do? Sure, I guess. Detective King? We're, we're getting, uh, I guess, I guess, I guess. You don't want to be asked the same questions over and over again. That's what I'm understanding from what you're saying. So, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you some different questions. You're not evoking your right to attorney. You're saying... Can I get one? If it's, I'm going to keep asking these, if you're going to keep asking me the same questions. I told you I don't know what right. you're talking about. So, I'm can you get me an attorney? I'm not, I'm not going to ask you the same questions. Well, if you can get me an attorney, I would, I would appreciate it. Uh, I, we've already explained to you, we can't get you an attorney. Well, well who did you say I could call? You said you could, yeah, you we'll, said you could we'll make phone calls. We'll end the interview. Calls. You want an attorney, we'll end the interview, all right? Okay. All right? Yeah. I want to be clear about this. If you're evoking your right to an attorney, you, you, yeah, you refuse sure. to speak to us without an attorney present. I guess. If it's so it's not, it's not a guess. It has to be a yes or no. Question. Yeah. The one line here is, is I understand what you get frustrated. I just wish you could get, get me a lawyer because I feel like I'm just sitting here. and You get frustrated because you don't want to keep answering the same questions over and over again. Well, and, he, you know, I could, with what he's saying, he's saying giant paragraphs and he says yes or no, but who knows what yes or no means, what he's saying to me. Okay, so why don't, how about if we change the line of question? Can you just get me someone? Is you yes. Mentioned, you mentioned you could. I mean, thank you. The time is 3.35 p.m. 
20th, the year 2009. Thank you. If you like this type of content and you'd like to support what I do, please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel, and also consider supporting me on Patreon. There you'll be able to find hundreds of notorious crime stories, exclusive testimonies and video footage, plus it only costs $5 per month.